a man, for instance, or men, you know, come into an agreement. And God by himself is entering into that agreement with a man on certain terms and conditions to provide certain privileges. Amen. So there is value in covenant. Somebody said there is value in covenant. Now, the highest form of an agreement is a covenant. And typically, it's, it's because of the weight that it carries. Um, examples, very good example of covenant is Abraham. You know, God had a covenant with Abraham, starting from Genesis chapter 12, where he said, come out of your people, and I will show you. Come into a land that I will show you. And Abraham began his journey with God. In chapter 13, verse 13, God also spoke to him again and said, look, I will bless you. In case you forgot, <laughs> I will bless you. And you see that progressively, God began to expatiate on the details of that covenant. In chapter 15, God appeared again and told him, he said, this is the covenant that I will have with you. You shall circumcise every male that is born in your house. And the Bible says that same day, Abraham sacrificed himself. He had 318 soldiers that went to war. You can imagine the amount of, amen blood on a single day. And since that day, everybody, every man um, in Israel and most men around the world are circumcised when, they're born, when they are born. In 2 Samuel chapter 9, you see that God also entered a covenant with David. David came at some point and said he wanted to build a house for God. He came into his heart. He just had a heart to build a house for God. And God said, ah, since I've been around, have I ever said that I needed a house to stay? Nobody has taught it and brought it to heart to build a house for me. Because you taught this thing, you won't build it, oh, but I'm enacting a covenant with you. They call it the sure message of David. God said, I swear, that nobody, that until this earth ends, David will not lack a man on his throne. No hair. He will not lack a hair on the throne. Why? Because God entered into a covenant with him. And why is a covenant so important? Covenants are important because, um, or why is it the highest form of agreement? Because it's typically enacted by blood. <laughs> it's enacted by blood. Amen. People, everybody understands the law of the land. I mean, people, when you contravene the law, the government enforces the law, right? Uh -huh. So most people believe the law of the land, than they believe in God's covenant. But it should not be that way. The covenant of God supersedes it. And why? It's because of the blood factor. The blood factor. The blood factor. The blood factor. God, <laughs> everywhere you see a covenant enacted in the Bible, you will see that God enacts that covenant. There's a blood commonality that you find in those covenants. This is why things like marriage are very sacred and very, very it's bigger than the contract um, that the government enforces. Marriage is a covenant. Why? Because there is blood involved. Amen. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 28, if we can quickly go there. Thank you, media. It says, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And this is Jesus talking about the new covenant, right? He said, this is the blood that I shed you know, for the remission of sins. Now, at that point, that's symbolic. This is also why the communion is very powerful. It's a sign of the covenant that we have with God in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In Hebrews chapter 9, if we go to Hebrews chapter 9, from verse 15 to 18. Hebrews chapter 9, from verse 15 to 18. We're going to read this together. And the media, if you can help us. Display that on the screen. Okay. Oh, you can see it there. Okay, I'm going to read it. In, um, because of, Okay, yes, let's, let's go together. One, two, go. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. We have to do it louder than that. Verse 16. For where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. Verse 17. Verse 18. 
was dedicated without blood. Verse 19. He took the blood of calves and goats with water, scarlet wool, and hyssop, and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people. Why? 20. Saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. So, you see that the, even the Old Testament had to be enacted by blood. Praise the Lord. So, there's a blood factor. And where there is blood, there is death. You see what he said in the preceding verses. He said that the, there's no testament that is in force except the testator dies. We understand that, right? In, uh -huh. So, there is, a, there is a blood factor. Please tell someone I was bought with a prize. I was bought with a price. Uh, there's a blood price that was paid on my head. <laughs> there's a blood price. So entering the covenant is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's a, there's a blood foundation <laughs> that enacts and activates that covenant. Now, details of a covenant. Every covenant has details. Uh, the covenants that we have in Christ, there are rights and privileges that we have. I just want to enjoin us this morning to take a journey to find out what those rights are. Uh, because they say ignorance, <laughs> ignorance is the biggest robber. Praise the Lord. In Daniel 11 verse 32, it said, They that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploits. You can't enforce what you don't know. You can't. Satan will rob us <laughs> until we know. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, it said, My people are destroyed. Because they lack knowledge. Because they are not interested in finding out what I have done for them. Therefore, they, they have gone into captivity. Praise the Lord. None of us will go into captivity. If you are in captivity, you will not remain there. You have to, we have to learn to return to the stronghold. In Zechariah 9 verse 11, it said, Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hold. Even today, do I declare that I will render double to you. Aha. Uh -huh. So there are details of this covenant. There are rights that it conveys that God is standing by to enforce if only we will find out. Somebody say knowledge. Say it louder, knowledge. So the... Moving on now. The, the thing about covenant, what makes it so powerful? We say God is a covenant-keeping God. It's because God is committed. <laughs> Somebody say God is committed. What is the value of an agreement when there is no commitment? Zero. There is no agreement when there is no commitment. Do we understand that? Now, in the case of a covenant with God and with us, with men, what we are saying here is the almighty God is committed. Let's see something in Hebrews chapter 6. In Hebrews chapter 6 from verse 13 to 17. Very quickly, I will just read it through. It says, for when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by who? Ah, verse 14. Saying, surely, blessing, oh, I will bless you. Multiplying, I will multiply you. Verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. Verse 16. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute. Please, do we, are we following that scripture? So what it means is, there's no debate again. When there's swearing, Abby. And the Bible says that God could not swear by any greater, so he swore by himself. And then, I like what, uh, it says that God determined to show more. Stronghold. Strong.
Ah, we need to check it. Let's go to Jeremiah 33 from verse 19. You see how committed God is to his covenant. Even after men are dead, God doesn't forget. Somebody say God does not forget. And the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, verse 20, Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night, so that there will, be no, there, will be, there will not be day and night in their season, verse 21, then my covenant may also be broken with, with who? This is 340 plus years after David. Can you see commitment? Amen. This is God, though. This is the nature of God. He says, so that he shall not have a son. Okay, thank you. Verse 22 says, verse 22. Let's move on. Verse 22. Most of heaven cannot stand of the sea measured. So, of years. Verse 26. <laughs> okay. okay. Verse 25. Thank you. He said, Thus says the Lord, if my covenant is not with day and night, and if I have not appointed the ordinances of heaven and earth, verse 26, then I will cast away the descendants of Jacob and David, my servant, so that I will not take any of his descendants to be rulers over the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, for I will cause their captives to return. And will have mercy on them. Amen. This is the character of the God that we are dealing with. If he says it, he said, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. The question before us is, do we really believe what God is saying to us? <laughs> because God is committed. Are you committed? Are you committed? God never forgets his covenants. Is committed to you. He will never forget, forget you. Isaiah 49 verse 15 to 21. We have to believe he is who he says he is and will do what he says he will do. Amen. God will go to any length to fulfill his covenant. Any length. Romans 8 32. He said he who did not spare his own son. How shall he not also give you all things? All things. Somebody say all things. We have to come to that. We just have to come to that point where we believe God for who He is, not for who we are. <laughs> because sometimes we look at God in the light of our weaknesses. Ah, I failed. I can't do this thing. Uh, but God is not like that. God say, when you are weak, that's when I'm strong. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you are weak, I mean, how strong was Abraham? 1,300 years after, he's gone. Can he fight for himself? Can he defend himself? Can he go and pray to God? God, fulfill your promise, fulfill your promise. Can he do that? He can't do anything again. But God said, I am still committed to you. I am still committed to you. Has God told you anything and you're already doubting it? God is a covenant-keeping God. He will fulfill what he says he will. If you read the journey of Abraham very well, you see how the frailty of men and the faithfulness of God. <laughs> when Abraham told, when God told Abraham, go out, Abraham was a man of faith. How many of us believe that? Amen. He was a man of faith. He's a father, he's a father of faith. But it came a point when from pressure with his wife, he found, he tried to find a shortcut <laughs> to the blessing. And the funny thing was, it was just after God told him again that you will have a child, I will bless you. Now, after that period, in Genesis 15, God now came again <laughs> and said, I will bless you. Now, this time Abraham said, how will I know that you will bless me? When I don't have, is it this servant? Is it my servant that will inherit my promise? God said, no, you will have a child. <laughs> you have a child. Now, at this point, Abraham was not a child. He gave birth to Isaac at what, year, what age? One, 100. 100. 100. 100. 
Did, did, you, did we hear that? <laughs> God will do what he says he will do. He will do what he says. He's ever committed, ever faithful. Ever faithful. Somebody say God is ever faithful. He will do what he says he will do. So that's why we don't need to worry. I mean, sometimes we have fruitless, wasteful worry. Nonsense worry. Worry that has no, no, no meaning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And it's because we, do, we doubt God. You know, God said I would do this thing and it looks like it's delaying. Ah, anxiety. That's why in Philippians chapter 4 verse 5, it says, don't be anxious for anything. Say, don't be worried for nothing. Please tell your neighbor, don't be worried for nothing. You know, a time came this year. We are, God, thank God we are in the second quarter. But there was a time this year where, where everybody was, where a lot of experts were prophesying doom for Nigeria. Right? Is that, is that correct? And the weather was also very hot. So it looked as if everything was working against the country. Have you noticed that the season is shifting? That's how life is. <laughs> But God does not shift. Amen? God does not change. He said it's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same tomorrow. 